Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Richard here with another episode of the Die About the Sword podcast. We have noticed a substantial increase in the number of listeners to our show, and we really appreciate that. We hope you guys are enjoying that. We know you have a lot of podcasts you can listen to, and every podcast has something that makes it special. But you know what makes us special? Love. We love making this show, and we love you. If you haven't already, please review us on Apple Podcasts. That really helps other people get to see our show and enjoy what we've been up to. Want to give a huge thank you to the guys over at Midnight Syndicate. If you're looking to add some spooky music to your adventures or just your life in general please uh check them out at midnight syndicate.com and another thank you to sword coast soundscapes for letting us use the ambient sound effects that we add into the show check them out at youtube.com slash sword coast soundscapes well that's enough for me let's get back to the show favorite hangover food? Uh, Not spaghetti and milk. What? Why would you even do that? <laughs> well, you don't do it twice. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I had a, a, a lot of opportunity this weekend, or this past week, to oh, yeah, try you were out of town. Food. Yeah, no, I was at a conference, and you know how businessmen do. My favorite hangover food is tacos from Jack in the Box. See, that's one of my favorite drunk foods. Oh. Uh, Those aren't food. Well, they're in their own group. Yeah. Food like polymers. You have the you have the food pyramid and then you have Jack in the Box tacos beside the pyramid. (laughs) They're not even part of the food pyramid. It's its own pyramid made out of Jack in the Box tacos. Exactly. But there's nothing like it. Yeah. You know. This is there is indeed nothing like it. (laughs) I would say my favorite hangover food would probably be Taco Cabana breakfast tacos. (gasps) Yes. So the conclusion is definitely tacos. Yes. Well, the the actual Mexican hangover food is menudo. No. If you don't know what menudo is, it is uh, like an intestinal soup. That's tripe. It's stomach. Yep. That's intestines. That sounds gross. It's not intestines. Everything it's tripe. Everything it's under your stomach is intestines. No. Yes. It's, it's menudo is tripe. It's not chitlins. Oh, I don't know snap. what a chitlin is. Chitlins are intestines. Oh, that's all. Anything below the stomach is intestines. You're correct. But menudo is above the intestines. It's stomach. I, it's I, tripe. I don't even like it, so I don't know why I'm. I know. <laughs> I I don't like it either. Yeah. I don't like anything like She's, that. I don't mean. Yeah. I don't. I don't. She's a scientist, Philip. I don't don't, don't yeah. question her on anatomy. Uh, I, and I particularly loathe uh, the English eat tripe too. My mother tried to make me eat this. Like, <laughs> it's. I mean, it sounds related to haggis. Yeah. So, no. I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm used to eating the trash parts of the the animal, but it's. <laughs> I don't like the. F- but not that flavor. part. No. 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 Not it's not part. even the meat. It's just the whole. It's the whole thing. thing. Yes, yeah. I don't like it's the texture. Because um, yeah, I'll eat tongue. I eat head. I eat yeah, all, all right. sorts of stuff. Well, I'm grossed out, but now. that's all good. But I don't tripe see is not. that sounds awful. Tripe is terrible. But I don't see why you wouldn't just get it in a sausage. I'm a really big sausage eater. I'm sure you just... do. I'm sure you do. Yeah, I mean, so just just get it that way instead of like the more specific. Like this is actually a tongue. Like you just grind it, it up and put it up in a sausage. Then it wouldn't be menudo. Menudo is specifically well. Mm-hmm. You got to think... call it something else if you don't put tripe in it. Well, I regret asking this tw- question. Yeah. I think it's ruined all future <laughs> hangover meals for me. You know what? You should try it, though. All right. I'd rather eat spaghetti and milk. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. bet the results would be the same. <laughs> yeah, but you'll eat the Probably. spaghetti and milk twice. Uh, so you'll eat the tripe twice, too. No, no, no. So we're about um, to die, right? Yeah. Probably. Well, maybe. Well, I had some thoughts, just deep thoughts on this adventure. How creepy is it that Roderick had, and this is metagaming because we still mm-hmm. don't know this happened, but the whole horror of being burned to death while chained to a wall, because that's what's happened in this room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that combination of excruciating pain and complete inability to do anything about yeah. it. I forgot. No hope. Did he hear like them screaming? Yeah, he heard he heard people wailing for help. And felt the felt what that was. Like mm-hmm. not only are you burning alive, but there's also this extra level of pain where you're trapped. And as you reconcile to what's happening and realize that there's mm-hmm. no way out for you. The no hopelessness, hope. the desolation. Mm. It's like no wonder this place is haunted. Exactly. Yes. Right? And that this is very important for, for Vivian and it speaks to what uh, Zenobia does too, which is freeing these spirits mm-hmm. from this horror that they have to live over and over and over again. It's really haunting. Yes. It brings an interesting level of sympathy to the situation of you know, if you think about any justice system, you know there's going to be people that are innocents and they're just like, I got 
I got arrested for for medieval weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in this horrible prison system now. Or you owed money or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some guy didn't like you and found a way to lock you up. So It's and like the Salem witch trials. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think it's really important for Vivian, though, so that she can shoot stuff and kill stuff, mm-hmm. liberate stuff. <laughs> Liz is bringing it back around to a point, which is <laughs> Vivian, get on it. Don't hesitate. <laughs> Yes, you're doing good by letting them go. <laughs> you can't hurt them any more than they've already been hurt. That's yeah. the other thing. What a horrible way to go. Really. Speaking of Vivian, she's she's a little tied up right now. Huh? Da, uh, 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 uh. Do I get a reflex save, by the way? No. <sighs> Bummer. I would imagine this is a CMB roll. Yeah, it's going to roll to uh, attack you. Oh, okay. All right. But we're doing initiative rolls first. Woohoo! All right. Wait, didn't it go first anyway? Because It will, because of a surprise flooded, round. Yeah. But this way I'll know who goes after it. Way to, way to give me hope for a moment. Their skill got a natural 20. Woo! Yeah, 20. Okay. Roderick didn't do too poorly either. 15 plus 3. So, so third skill, 22. Third skill, I got a 22. Vivian? Uh, 16. 16. Roderick got a 17. Roderick, so that 17. So that might be easy for you to put in right above her. Zenobia? 18. 18. And Dwarfy, who is being played by Philip yet again? 12. 12. Awesome. And to describe the room, this is a almost triangular room. I can't tell. Are those... Was, and we're at the... It's, oh, you know what? It's diamond shape. It looks it's, like a Superman. It, it looks yeah. like Superman's... Symbol. Yeah, it's Superman's logo, and we're at the Minus bottom. The and we're at the bottom. Yeah, we're at the, the point. The point. Um, are there doors on the two angled ends? There's only one door that you are standing by in the eastern mm-hmm. side of the room. And we're all... Point. And we're all just hanging out in this corner. We're all in the room. Vivian's closest to the door. She's got Roderick next to her, in Zenobia, catty corner in front of her, and then Thurskel's in the middle in front, and Dwarfie's catty corner with Roderick and Thurskel. And we're all at the bottom of the Superman. That's where are you Where are you chained to then? Where are the, the chains? The wall. They're all across the wall. Are you chained right here, just inside the door? This right. side or the, this side? You, you said that the chains were all around the room, right? right. Yes, yeah. they're so, all around yeah. the room. So she's standing mm-hmm. by the wall, closest to the door, but there's still chains there. So is yes. the door open out or in? I would say it probably opens out. out. Okay. I think it'd be hilarious if it opened in and then yes. poor prisoner gets smacked, gets smacked in the face every, every time, time by the door. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder this one attacks you. Just really? this one guy in the corner. I'm pretty sure I've uh, we've set the canon that every door in here is the kitchen doors so that they always swing back and forth. <laughs> Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Really right. poorly designed right. prison. Wait, 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 wait. And <laughs> is that the door noise? <laughs> yeah, that's the... Wait, 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 oh. wait, 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 wait. Sounds like a pig. Oh, I thought it does sound was like a pig. And dwarf going wee, 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 all the way home. <laughs> and for some reason, Dwarf, he finds a way to get hit by the door no matter where he's standing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's see if these manacles are able to latch on to Vivian. I bet they will. 20. You're such a pessimist, Roderick. That... that that Ouch. works. <laughs> <laughs> that was Richard. That was not Roger. Oh, Let's get that clear. Yeah, Richard. So these manacles latch onto your arm. They're going to do a little Just bit one of damage. Arm? Eh? I have one arm free? No. Okay. Bummer. Both arms are shackled. So Now, question. D- Description-wise, um, do they kind of come up? Like, is there a manacle on each side, like, behind me? Like, are they at my waist? Are they pulling my arms up behind my head? Yeah, I have a very important question. Is this sexy chained up or? (laughs) Right, arms above her head on a very short chain. Bust has to stick out now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Knowing Vivian, no matter what happened, it would end up being probably sexy. Yeah. So. If they're down low, then she has to stick her butt out. Right. (laughs) So the way this happens is you're standing, there's no facing in Pathfinder, Mm -hmm. but for flavor's sake, you're facing into The the, the room. And they come up from behind you mm-hmm. and around you and latch on to your Ugh. your wrists. Sort of like cross. Kind of cross. Okay. Oh, so, so kind oh. Of very so like right chain to the left side, left chain to the right yeah. side. So her it's hands are like style. lashed, not manacled. Lashed, I mean tied. Like, are they tied or are they um, handcuffed? Handcuffed. Handcuffed. Okay. Okay. But one, but the but right side than, is going to the left. Right, bigger right. than handcuffs, manacles. Like, right, right, right. But I was I was seeing if if they were like lashed together or got it up together. I yeah. think it's yeah, just pulling in opposite directions. Yeah. So all she would have to do is sort of duck down and turn around. She'd be facing the wall. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. With, with there's manacles. no facing the wall in Pathfinder. <laughs> <laughs> if Flavor says she's facing the in, if Flavor says she's facing the inside, then that's the it DM's also new says name. That she the can DM's. Okay, it was a simple question. Thank yes. you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Also, the DM's new name is Flavor. 
flavor. And she, and she looks sexy. <laughs> That's the point. I mean, flavor is code for whatever the GM wants to do. So. Right. It's a DM flavor. All right. So now that we understand how she's manacled, continue. Thank uh, you. <laughs> all right. So not only are you manacled, but they are a little bit tight. So you do take one point of damage. Hmm. That's not like fire damage or... No, no, no. It's just like a bruising around oh. the wrists. Oh, Oh, I appear to be a little tied up. Vivian likes making the same horrible jokes that I do. Uh huh. All right, and then next up is going to be Thurscale. Okay, so is she chained to the wall? Is it rope to the wall? What is connecting her to the wall? Chains to the wall, and then ropes connecting each of the manacles together around the room. Okay, because I know there's a haunt in here. It's what <laughs> I know it is there. <laughs> I know it. Are you sure? But I can't hit it because I've got a hammer. That's what I always have. Don't you have an axe? I do, but uh, <laughs> <That's, as laughs> the hammer doesn't work. But the axe will. I was about to say against the chain. I think I would use my axe. The, the chain. The chain I mean, it's, I it's probably going to be the same hardness between the chain, uh, the hammer, and the axe. I mean, it it's, will. It, um, if it was rope, I would definitely grab my axe and swipe at it. But it's not. But Thurskill has seen holy water be effective against haunts, and Thurskill has a haunt siphon, and he's been lectured to on using it. I mean, I guess I can do that. I c- do you guys really want me to use my haunt siphon right now? Well, on Roderick's turn, he's going to roll knowledge religion to see if he can see how dangerous this haunt is, but it's not his turn. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get... Can I get two things out or just one thing out? You get two things out, but that's your whole turn. Yep. Okay, cool. Oh, that's my whole turn? I'm mm-hmm. going to get one thing out and hold. Yeah, you can use a move action to get one thing out and then uh, hold an act. Uh, no. What are you trying to do? Can you describe it fully? Sure. Um, what he's going to do is he wanted to get his haunt siphon in one hand and holy water in the other. And whatever it was, whatever he needed to do, that's what he was going to use. But that would be your whole turn to draw one of each. Yeah. Right, right. You wouldn't be able right to move hand. or anything, anything else. Yeah. It would, you just it would draw be both things out. End of my turn. So. Oh, m- my question is, both of them you would use to combat a haunt, though, right? Correct. So why don't you pull one out and use it? Right. Okay. If you think it's a haunt. So I, I know it's a haunt. We've only faced two of the bad, the bad bad guys. So I'm going to use the holy water. Excellent so, idea. I'm okay. Draw the holy water. Mm-hmm. And all I have to do is I don't even have to move because she's right behind me, right? Yeah. Correct. You're mm-hmm. you're Jason's her. So I'm going to pour the water on her chains. All right. So you open the the bottle and start pouring the holy water on the chains that are attached to Vivian. Nothing happens. I see you were going to say that, you jerk face. Also, uh, props for conserving our vials by not breaking it. Yeah, no, no. (laughs) I was, yeah, listening back to older episodes, and you guys are just willy-nilly tossing these things out. (laughs) I've got an inn at the bar. She provides me all the bottles I need. You have an inn at the bar? Bar at the inn? I got got an inn at the bar at the inn. I've got an inn at the inn. Okay. All right. I got an inn at the outward inn. That's... That's what I need to say. I've got an in at the outward end, and there I have go. all the bottles I need. All right. Next up is going to be Zenobia. So I, I see that uh, Thorskill pouring holy water didn't do anything to this, so I'm not going to waste a holy water vial at the moment. I am going to quick draw my long sword, and I'm going to take a swing at... Is it one chain that goes to a center point, like coming out of a ring? Yes. So the ring that is holding this chain Uh would probably be about the height of Vivian's neck behind her. And the chain comes from there around her and wraps around. So it's basically almost like it's... She's all bound up. She's all bound up. You can still try to attack that chain. You have room to do that. You're skilled enough with your sword that you would probably still be able to do this. Tell me Without hurting her. Just tell me to bend forward. Yeah, it's like a, hey, Vivian, lean forward. Right. Mm-hmm. I just want to make sure that's yeah. all I need to do yeah. is, hey, Vivian, lean forward. Mm-hmm. And since you don't have to move, you're already close enough, you can also study it this turn. Thank you, Roderick. Rick, Rod, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Can't believe we haven't made that joke yet. Right. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to. Tr- I'm going to study it, and I'm going to take a swing. Vivian leans forward with her Vivian eyes closed. Vivian, lean forward. Close your eyes. <laughs> Don't watch. All right. And that's a natural nineteen. That is a critical yes. threat with a long sword. There you go. Wow. With good that's roll. Plus that's plus four, right? Plus five. So that's a twenty-four. That's a definite hit. Okay. Wow. And roll to confirm the critical. Eighteen. Wow. wow, that is yes. that's that's a confirmed critical. Wow. That right? is a confirmed critical. Oh, does that mean we get a card, or are those only for twenties? See, C- once again, we're using the, the sword icon there. Deck, crit deck, the critical deck, which by Paizo. 
I thought it was really small, but it was upside down. Um, <laughs> this language is weird. <laughs> it was just written I'm, in I'm, I'm having some problems in that with the microphone setup, I only have one eye working. <laughs> Let's see. Severed spine, double damage, and 3d6 dex damage. All that dex. Those Four chains are pretty halves. dexterous. Yes. I mean, they so grab double, d- double damage. Yeah. So. So you roll do 2d8, and whatever your bonus is, you double it. So that'd be 2d8 plus 6. That's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. Okay. It's about time. And is there a save on the the damage, like the dexterity damage, or or no? I don't have anything marked down. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yes, you're correct. Fortitude halves. All right. So it will not do I'm any sorry, of the dex I, damage. I just, cracked, okay. I just cracked the second die. It won't do any what? will not do any of the dexterity damage. So what is the uh, fortitude on a chain? I would imagine it's immune to anything that requires a fortitude save unless it affects objects. That's correct. What okay. a snap. All right. Guys. What are you, what's happening? I keep on tipping the dice over before I can read it. Double fives. Oh, that's easy. Ten plus 16. 16, 16 points of damage. Of 16 points, points of, damage. of damage. So Zenobia goes and strikes the chain, a perfectly calculated hit, and you know it's a good hit. But not all of that damage seems to go through. Uh, Some of it did, magic but not chains. all of it. Yeah, what does she? So what do you do with that? Holy water on it and everything. What do you do when that happens? Zenobia is used to hitting and hitting thoroughly and precisely and perfectly, and she just she just what happened? Like she's just like what the what the heck? Well, she hit a chain with swords, so there's also a big twang. Mm-hmm. Sparks flying. Vivian's hair yeah. catches on fire. Right. <laughs> and there's and, there's, and I can see a big nick mm-hmm. in one of the uh, mm-hmm. links. But, yeah, but uh, what does she say? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no. It's like, oh, for Desna's sake. <laughs> this thing's haunted itself. This metal's haunted. <laughs> All right. Good response. All righty. Who's next? Next up is going to be Roderick. All right. So I have a suspicion this is going to be a knowledge arcana, not religion. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> Dork. You should see Richard's face. He's so pleased with knowing that. Natural 19, 26. <gasps> yeah. Nice. All right. So this is a construct. These are animated manacles. Oh. Um, they do have hardness because they are metal. Uh, so they're with construct traits. They're immune to things that like death effects and anything that requires a fortitude save. They're Unless not, it affects objects. Right. They're not subject to anything that does non-lethal damage, ability damage, ability drain, fatigue, exhaustion, energy drain, paralysis, sleep, stun. Lots of effects that they're immune to. <laughs> they're not people. Uh, they can't be charmed. <laughs> Darn it. Darn it. <laughs> In other words, they're hunks of metal. Pretty much. Uh, that are animated. They've basically taken on a life of their own. Uh, one thing you do notice about these with that role is that these are slightly flawed and brittle which means that they have a weakness to cold. Mm. Weakness to cold. Do you have chill touch? Mm. Do you have any cold spells? I have cold spells, but I did not prepare them. Uh, of course not. What good are you, Magus? 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 Magus, I think. Wish I had prepared cold spells. Well, I'm so do bummed. It. You can do it the next time. Well, to be fair, when you're fighting undead, you usually don't prepare cold damage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, um, and there's nothing else of note. Well, so Nothing else of note? That was a lot of info. Yeah, but I mean, does he know anything about like how big of a threat this is? It's not a huge threat. It will keep doing damage as long as it stays wrapped around Vivian. Another question. Mm-hmm. Can, is there, there's somebody in the room, like, if we get into the center, they can't reach us? There's that, but you also you haven't seen any of the others that was, animate that at all. That was my other question: was are there any others animating? It's only, for some reason this is the only one that is animating. Ugh. Pass, hard pass. Mm. All right, so um, Roderick sort of tries to to comfort Vivian. He's like, "You're okay. This is not a major threat. Uh, <laughs> we'll just have to break it off. You're not you're not in dire straits right now." That's I, I like his response. I'm laughing at just like the <laughs> the image of her just. Locked the what's like it's, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> like, oh, okay, Roderick, thank you. I trust you. Please get me out. You're not dying. Just hold still. <laughs> hold still. <laughs> okay. And so, as he did in the last episode, he's going to brand spell combat, spell strike, two attacks with his warhammer. Okay. And knowing the um, the damage reduction threshold he has to overcome, he's going to spend as a swift action an arcane pull point to magically enhance his Warhammer. Okay. That extra plus one might come in. Natural 13 on both rolls. I rolled 2d20s at once. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so that would be a 17 to hit on each attack. I'm sorry, 16 to hit on each attack. Those will hit. Both yes. hit, yes. Okay. You don't take a penalty on one of the attacks or something? I take a penalty on both. It would have been an 18 Oh, otherwise. okay. All right, so attack number one does... <laughs> does farts? <laughs> Just farts? Yes. Seven points of damage. That's it does bad. no damage. Oh, no. I rolled really low. Second attack. You smoothed out that uh, that chink that she put in there. <laughs> Even worse, so no damage on either oh, attack. Oh, Patrick. He tries he try so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, this magic enhancement lasts a minute, so we got all day. Oh, that's There cool. you go. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah, as Roderick goes in with the, the hammer to smash these, basically you hit it enough that you kind of pull the chain a bit, and it gives it a little bit of, a little bit of slack. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't do any damage to the actual chain itself. Mm-hmm. But they were good hits. They definitely hit the chain. Pwang, pwang. <laughs> you probably pull Vivian's hand up each time that you hit. <laughs> Dislocate her shoulder. Right. <laughs> All right, Vivian, you are up next. Mm, just keep wanna make keep wanna making this tied up joke until it's until it lands. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't have a big rep- repertoire of bondage jokes. Um. Well, there's not a lot I can do. Can I uh, look around the room? <laughs> anything else interesting in the room? With your hands bound like this, can you cast anything? No, because it, it, all my spells require somatic That's components. That's what I thought. So just moving yeah. my hands around. Mm-hmm. I'd love to detect magic to see if there's any other magical manacles. I have a question, GM. Yes. Since um, supernatural abilities don't require somatic components, mm-hmm. and we're all surrounding her, can she give a bit of luck to one of the people that are trying to break her out of the chains? Sure. <laughs> Teacher's pit. Uh, yeah, she's going to give it to Vivian, not to Roderick. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to give it to herself? No, oh, dang it. <laughs> You've been doing that we are one the entire person. podcast. <laughs> we are one person. <laughs> she's going to give it to... Man, and I was trying to be all sassy, and I just flubbed it. Uh-huh. She's going to give it to Zenobia, not to Roderick. All right. Uh, yeah, it's not like my- Roderick gets to attack twice. Yeah, it's not like Roderick didn't hit, uh, get enough damage off. Should have. Um... Best of luck to Zenobia. Which yeah, that's what? <laughs> you get to roll twice when you attack. You can just take the more favorable result. You can get a bit of luck when you deserve it, Roderick. <laughs> I mean, tactically, it was a much better idea to give it to Roderick, but your character. Do what you want. Well, someone's sassy. I know. <laughs> he thinks he's sassy. I'm just cool. speaking mechanically. I'm yeah. just stating facts. Again. I'm about the facts, man. Okay, again, it, ben- it depends on if you hit and roll high enough damage. And we don't get to roll double on damage. So if you roll two sevens again, you're out. What good have you done me? <laughs> anyway, anything else you want to do while you're uh, there, Vivian? Anything else interesting in the room? See some dust. You probably see some scratch marks on the wall from people that like counting. That's horrifying. Time there. Oh, no, I thought, I don't know what I was, I was expecting. Like flying, fingernail, flying, fingernail marks. Flying, trying to get out. Scratch yeah. marks. I mean, there's probably some of that, too. I'm good. All right. Next up is Dwarfy. Who can do absolutely nothing? I'm looking at his spells. Their spells are terrible. I mean, the only thing he can do is hit, but, I mean, he doesn't want to hit it with a hammer. That's not going to do anything, right? He would do as much as an axe. Yeah, as long as you roll... My sword, yeah. As long as you roll above 10. Okay, well... I know Dwarfy's stats. The eyes he can roll is 11. Zenobia. Those one (laughs) points can help. (laughs) Me. (laughs) Hail me. Hail me. Vivian. So... Spin around, give yourself a little stretch in this. Twist around so that you're facing the wall, and then you can lean back when we're trying to hit I'll it. let you tell me that on your turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it would make it a little easier to not get hit by Dwarfy, but <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use the Warhammer. What does Dwarfy say when uh, he's about to swing that hammer? Um, I sure hope this works. He doesn't have a saying. Like... And he rolls a natural one. <sighs> oh, wow. Uh-oh. Roll to confirm. You're going to wish you'd spun around and gotten far away. With the number of actual one, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> 13. That is a confirmed fumble. Oh, no. <laughs> Dwarfy. As Dwarfy just goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's already been hitting the bottle. Notched. Your weapon takes 1d6 points of damage. Oh, ignoring no. Ignoring hardness. Oh, no. Damn. Uh-oh. That's Dwarfy's bad. having That's a rough bad. day. So, yeah. So, Dwarfy swings. He sees the woman that he is infatuated with today chained up on the wall, <laughs> and he swings his mighty hammer, and he hits the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it damages his weapon for 
Three points of damage. Mm. What does that mean? So just like we can take damage, items can take damage. That's why you're hitting these manacles as you're trying right. to get right. the, their hit right. points. Right, I get it, I get it. But how do, what does it do then? It turns a long sword into a short sword? No, it mm. just breaks it. Yeah, once It's it, like if with a hammer, so it's many... like he pops the head off the handle. Right. Well, this says notched, right? So he took three points of damage. At what point does your weapon become Yeah, that's what Richard's broken. looking yeah, at. Ah, uh, got it, it. I see. Now. All right. And it's a Masterwork Silver Warhammer. Wow. That's going to be costly to repair. Well, yeah, I just use fortunately, I got that. he uh, it has arson tools, and he can craft weapons. So I'm also an armor. So, so it looks like a warhammer has five hit points, and since you did three damage to it, it now has the broken condition. Oh man! Mm. So a broken weapon takes a negative two penalty on attack and damage rolls. So you can still use it though. Well, now it literally can't do enough damage to the object to matter. Right. So as he hits it. He misses, he hits the wall. As he hits the wall, he goes, ah, oh, fuck. He looks at the Warhammer, sees that it's now broken. He's like, ah, oh, fuck me, I'm hitting like an elf. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> yeah, Vivian's head snapped up a little bit at that. <laughs> Excuse me. My mother was an elf. Or father? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a foundling. <laughs> she was. So next up, the manacles will try to maintain the grapple they have on Vivian and well, squeeze a bit tighter. Well, I bet I bet you're going to have a real tough time maintaining that grapple. Um, I could roll a one. Did you? 17. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. There was a one in it. <laughs> Guess what? She's still manacled. As you take two points of damage oh, this time. I forgot it does damage. As they get a little bit tighter mm. around your wrists. Ugh. All right, Thurskell, you are up next. So he sees the broken hammer. He sees just we're not we're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. So he doesn't know if hitting it is going to help. But he's going to damn sure try. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> we know I damaged it. I really a thought bit. you were going to so like like the so run Thurskell away. runs into the wall. <laughs> like, I was like I was like where's it going? Bangs his head when it gets. To- it's useless. We should just quit. I'm helping. So he takes his warhammer, swings. Ooh, 19 on the die. Oh, yes. Yeah. So a total of 24. That'll Very hit. Nice. Very good. Very good. Max damage. <gasps> That's what we yes. needed. Wow. So 11 points of damage. So that one point <laughs> <laughs> went through. There we go. But that one point was all you needed. <gasps> yes! Oh my goodness. Yes. And as Thurskel, that was with your war with your hammer. Uh-huh. All right. So Thurskel basically showing Dwarfy how it's done. <laughs> swings the hammer down on the manacles. It breaks that that loop off the wall that was holding the manacles and breaks a rusted portion of the manacles in half as well. And Vivian topples forward and falls into Roderick. And as you fall forward, the manacles around your wrist open mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Re- release your wrists. Mm-hmm. As she falls forward. Oh, Are we out oh. of initiative? We are out of initiative. Oh. oh, thank you all. Thank you. Well, that was unpleasant. So can you cast light? She doesn't need to. I'm going to pop my... Uh, well, that means that that would use it. Light's free. Yeah. It is free. Yeah. I'll yep. cast light. Um, so does it does it stick with you? It'll go wherever you go? I can put it wherever I want. Do you want it on your person somewhere? Put it on my quiver. Okay, so you'll be backlit everywhere you go. <laughs> well, Very just, shiny butt. She's <laughs> this shadow at to the, the at monsters. The, at the, I just want it at, at the top. I don't want it mm-hmm. on something I'm a so weapon. So they can aim for your head. Hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to put it on through skill. <laughs> put it on through be skill. like an anglerfish just with your head. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> the little light bulb. I'll, um, yeah, I'm going to put it on one of the vials of holy water. It's going to look like the bottle in uh, Lord of the Rings. The, oh, one nice, the nice, nice. And um, first thing Vivian wanted to do after she's free and settled and gave hugs to everyone is um, detect magic around the room. All right. So Vivian detects magic around the room. Mm-hmm. You scan everything. Nothing is appearing as magical. It's so frustrating. The one time I didn't detect magic for going into the room is the one time it would have worked. And then, ugh, grr. So with the very high knowledge arcana that Roderick rolled, does he know how this could have been created? created Mm -hmm. basically this one would have been created almost like a haunt would have been just from the basically the horrible events that happened at this location but instead of like the spiritual energy being the one that animated it the manacles itself 
like absorbed some of that energy mm. Mm. and animated themselves. It just fell into a different category based on just the specific circumstances. Right. And also, you can imagine that some of the people that were locked up here were magical, so I'm sure some of their magical energy escaped mm-hmm. into the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Into the ether. It's Stuff like a, was leaking. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like a magical identity crisis of right. the item. Um, cool. Anything else in the room? Nothing else in the room. Yeah, we rolled high perception and we didn't see anything else. So. Yeah, so we just All walked right. in to get handcuffed. All right. Before moving on, um, well, and you know, we can assume that every time we get r- rid of one of these, that's a good thing. So, mm-hmm. uh, oh, oh, could we take them to sell to the uh, that lady? Ooh, you could. Excellent. You could. Yeah. <laughs> now, did Vivian have that idea? Nope. Vivian didn't have that idea. And, then, and I think she, she maybe she'll go. She's feeling a little braver since she she took that uh she did awesome in that battle with the Father Charlatan mm-hmm. and the Piper. Um, so I think she's going to gingerly pick up the manacles and kind of hold them out to Zenobia and be like, do you, do you think those Do you think those sellers would be interested? I think that's an excellent idea. Let's bring them with us. Excellent. And we could buy some, some holy items to help, help fight. Huzzah. <laughs> um, I wanted to pause real quick. I was just th- thinking about this room and the magical energy and... One of the things that's been frustrating both me and Vivian is the the cross between the magical versus the spiritual mm-hmm. hauntiness and where the lines end. And then I started thinking, can we can we kind of review the the clues we have so far? There's not a lot, but the um, there were symbols across the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we determined those were really old, and they seem to have something to do with the original fire. Yeah, but we, whatever but magic we don't was, know what it was. And yeah, we didn't roll high enough for that. And whatever magic was animating them has since faded. Okay, um, maybe maybe that night at the bar we can like re-roll on that or something. I don't know. Think about it more. And then we're still looking for a fountain, right? Did we find the fountain? The the professor saw something. No, I I haven't seen anything about a fountain at all. Isn't that what the professor was originally looking at, though? He said he wanted to transcribe runes from a fountain, but we haven't Uh seen a fountain yet. Yeah, that was my thought. Okay. It's odd to me that we haven't seen a fountain yet. I have my notes from the journal here. Okay, so I know what happened. I'm stupid. (laughs) I read fountain. I should have read foundation. It says transcribe the runes on the foundation, which is what we found, and we would have been looking for them if I wasn't so stupid. (laughs) We found them anyway, though. Like, we oh, found these, them on the foundation. These runes don't matter. We're looking for fountain runes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> these are foundation runes. They're useless. This, this is the trouble with They're accents. Far less important. And we don't know what those. We weren't able to transcribe them yet. I can't remember. Were we going to take a like? My thought now is like, did we take a rubbing? Um, I don't think we did. We did. We did. Yes, we did. Okay, so uh, that's what we should talk oh, about. Aren't we smart tonight at at Din Din's? Dorvi can read magic. Would that help any? No, we already tried that, and the magic has already faded. Yes. Oh. So there's no magic to read. It's just reading. <laughs> and we can't do that do either. Exactly. Rainbow. <laughs> and it was not written common, so we mm-hmm. weren't able to read the... Did we figure out what, what it was written? Were. I don't think so. No, we didn't roll high enough. Okay. So we just sucked. All right, well, we can we can do that over Din Din, some rabbit ribs. Mm-hmm. Rabbit ribs. Yeah, so... You have to eat a lot of them. (laughs) I want my bunny back, bunny back, bunny. Oh, my goodness. That's great. I would harrow stone that. Or not harrow stone, harrow card. No. (sighs) So so getting back into the scene, I imagine Dwarfy is looking disappointedly as broken masterwork silver warhammer. A little bit. And does he have any comments looking at it? No, he's just sitting there looking sad. I just imagine, like... The head dangling. Yeah. Like he's got a stick, and now it looks like a mace. It does. <laughs> or, <laughs> or a flail. Like, or a flail. <laughs> a flail. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, a flail. It's With just, a really big flaily part. And it's just like... Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> he takes out a beer out of his... <laughs> an ale out of his pack. His coping mechanism. Oh, he drinks some of it. He pours some on, on the... On the ground. No, <laughs> on the... On the... Pour it on out the for weapon. your warhammer. On the hammer. <laughs> I was thought you were pouring one out on the curb. I guess I'm pouring one out for his homie. He's just... You know, <laughs> Anyway, so Roderick, like, grabs the head of his warhammer and taps Dwarfy with the bottom half of the handle. You take this, and then as soon as Dwarfy grabs it, he uh, draws his rapier. Aw, sharing weapons. So what do I have now? You have a regular warhammer. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's it's one lower 
to hit because it's not masterwork. Um, but you know, it's going to work a lot better than his current. What is it? To hit? It's just regular. So whatever you have, I think you have a plus three right now. I have a, a remember. I have strength damage, two strength damage. Yeah. So I've got. I mean, my hand axe is plus two and a one d six plus one. It would be that. So I just I'll just use my hand. Uh, I appreciate. Uh, you, well, the, I mean, the warhammer is a one d eight though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's damage wise. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. So it's higher yeah. damage. Higher damage. Just give it back to me once yours is fixed. This is the nicest thing that anyone has ever done for me. Here, sh- share a drink with me. And and Roderick takes a, a big swig and he's like, anything for a fellow brother of Torak. Aww. Aww. Vivian oversees this whole thing and is just like silently clapping to herself like, oh, it's so sweet. Making little symbols. And she absolutely gets teary-eyed because she's like, it's so wonderful to see this type of spirituality inside this horrible, horrible place. <laughs> Let's move on. (laughs) It's so bromantic. (laughs) (laughs) No hero card for you. Oh. So, rapier in hand. Roderick's ready to move on. Mm -hmm. All right. Zenobia's just watching. And just real quick before y'all leave the room, just to get an idea of what this room is. Yeah, I was wondering that. Um, You can not only see the manacles around the walls, but if you take a a closer look at the room, because you all did perception checks and everything in here as well, um, you see where the benches were in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. Some more of those rings on the ground is where more manacles would have been Mm -hmm. where the benches were. Yeah. This would have been basically like a prisoner intake, oh. where they come in, they they have their seat, they get their... Prisoner waiting room. Processing. Processing. They they get told the rules of how things are. Mm-hmm. This is where they found out what the cell assignments are going to be. Mm. Look, get but their, this is how it's going to be. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. So this is the intake room. That makes room. sense. That makes sense. And presumably there were people in here when the prison caught fire. Correct. Ugh. Terrible. And mm-hmm. since the guards just had to take off to go help out with that, they just left them in here. Mm. That's rough. This was just a crappy situation all around. It mm-hmm. really, really was. Mm-hmm. Sad. I'm, I'm glad we're cleaning this place out. All right. Are we ready to move on? Yes. So we go back into t- the hallway. Now we're um, we're at this T intersection. Down the, the, the leg of the T, we had the chapel on one side, this Superman room on the other. Now we're going into the top of the T again. And working our way around the corner. So we're working our way around the Superman room. Mm-hmm. Going to the southern side, uh, along that wall, going around to the west of mm-hmm. the building. And the hallway bends to our right. It does. So here, uh, as you start going around the corner, uh, you do see there is another door here. Okay. We knock on it. Is there any more description, or should we just start rolling perception? It's a door-shaped door. Gary's reading. Give him a sec. It's shaped uh, like a door. <laughs> it is a door-shaped door, as opposed to the other kinds. Could be a mimic door. Right. <laughs> it's going to fall on you. So you see a door. It is unlocked, partially Doors open. Go. Open that door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I open the door. Swings right. open. Falls back in his face. <laughs> All right. Ladies first, Zenobia. <laughs> Roderick looks. At, Roderick looks at his fingers and the cantrip he'd prepared to open doors without any manual intervention and just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to be assertive. Right. Thurskell opens the door and inside you see a uh, stark room with dim light. There is a window on the uh, western wall of the room. It's letting in just a little bit of light. Kind of a dim light coming in. The only light coming through the room are through the bars of this window. Mm, Trickling. Mm. Trickling in just a little bit. I imagine there's dust wafting around. There is. You see the little swirls Mm -hmm. of dust and the the streams of light. On the northern wall of this room, you see a low stone bench to the west along that where the window is. You see a desk that has been basically destroyed and ruined. And then on the south side of the wall, on the south side of the room, you see this old brass brazier Mm. tipped over onto its side with what looked like branding irons in it. My guess is interrogation room? Oh, I was thinking... I was just thinking this is where you go next after you come after the intake, you, you get, get you, you get, get your num- branded. You get your yeah. number branded at yeah. 601. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just a guess. I mean, I don't know. Oh, that's mm. awful. Mm-hmm. So can we make a roll to figure out which one of our theories is correct? Well, I mean, okay. perception check, everybody. Would it be knowledge local for the... Knowledge local, knowledge history, either of those would work. I have knowledge local. 
Hey. Roderick has neither, so he'll roll perception. Vivian got a 12 for perception. 17 for Roderick. 17 for knowledge local. So with those perceptions, you can see that these brands um, are essentially, there's a few that have letters on them, a few that have numbers mm. on them. Mm. So there would be different combinations. Zenobia, with that knowledge local, you would remember that. I've seen people like with this brand, haven't that I? You've seen the brands town. like this. Uh, it's one thing that Harrowstone was known for, was so you could know who the worst of the worst were. If they ever uh, got out, you'd be able to locate them. And these brands would be right on the back of the neck. Uh, so easily, easy uh, to see uh, different that, letter and number combinations. That reminds me of an episode. It was like the Outer Limits or some weird show like that where you got a year of invisibility and they put like a mark on your forehead. And if uh, nobody could talk to you mm-hmm. or recognize you or, or notice you at all... If they did, they would get that same mark, and it just it it just ugh, ugh. it freaks me out. Branding's one of those really awful things. So Roderick, knowing that he's cast brand and he has the ability to mark creatures permanently, he's sort of feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the responsibility. Like he feels like he's an instrument of justice now. Like the justice system in his home country brands the most terrible criminals permanently so that way everyone knows who they are and he has the ability to do that magically sort of at will so Mm -hmm. he's feeling like that's an awesome responsibility and one that he needs to use when the situation demands it but he also needs to be careful and use it judiciously Mm -hmm. and not just willy-nilly so does he is he worried at all like does he think there's anything bad about branding people He's afraid of using the ability inappropriately. Willy-nilly. Yeah. Branding people who don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. But he thinks it is an appropriate tool when necessary. Mm-hmm. So he's not feeling any real internal conflict, just a little bit more apprehension of the responsibility. Does he want to... Is this just all going in internally? Is there any thoughts on it that he wants to share out loud? No, he wouldn't He wouldn't say anything to the party. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Just curious. No, but he's thinking this in his head. Right. But yeah, Thurskill feels like kind of the opposite. He feels like this this whole prison, anything, any practice, he feels it's evil. He feels the whole building is evil. The guards were evil. Everything that comes from here is evil. So he wouldn't be on board with that branding practice. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing Roger couldn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> but Thursky will. Oh my god, how about Bear if they branded these people? <laughs> that is a pretty ironic choice of words from you, Thursky. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's our word. We can use it. <laughs> <laughs> Thursky, life might be a little bit different when you can wander around and go wherever you want. When you're stuck in the same place with the same people for decades, sometimes you have to have a system for weeding out who is helping and who is causing the society to collapse. I mean, I thought that was the axe. Sometimes death is not the appropriate punishment. You need something less severe, but still permanent. I can agree with that. I mean, the the petty thieves and debtors in this prison shouldn't have died a fiery death. I absolutely agree. But petty thieves were not the only people who were locked here. Don't forget that. No, I'd rather see one... Damn it, I was going to quote somebody, but I can't remember the quote correctly. A thousand guilty people go free, then one innocent man jails. Yeah. Roger agrees with Not me. I want them all dead. <laughs> Vivian just wants everyone to get along. <laughs> everyone should be friends. Oh, good. We're all in agreement. Let's go into the next room. What's mm-hmm. uh, wait, uh, we haven't even gone into this room. We just opened the door. Oh, That is correct. Uh, so um, I guess Thurskill is going to walk into the room to okay. search it. Uh, Thurskill will walk in. Dwarfy will follow. Roger goes in as well. Zenobia will also go in. So. Vivian's going to wander around down the hallway without anyone with her. Oh, that's no. a dumb, dumb idea. <laughs> Find a spider. <laughs> Just kidding. She goes in the room. All right. So like I said, there is that desk that's on the western wall under the window. It looks pretty ruined, but there's still like a couple of drawers and stuff that look like they could be opened. Yeah. I would like to investigate the drawers. All right. Not the underwear. <laughs> Same exact roll. Underwear. That's 17. 17. You don't really see anything of note, but with that 17, you start noticing the smell of burning. <sighs> I was thinking before we walked in, it's like, I don't know if I want to go in because there's going to be a haunt. <laughs> like, <laughs> and as you notice that, that scent of burning. Flesh, maybe? It smells a bit like burning flesh or just burning coal. 
five of those brands that were on the, the ground are now red hot. Nope. And lift up and all come flying at each of you. Nope. Bye, Torag. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go root around oh, in for there. Desna. All right. So the first one is going to go against Thirsk. I'll just go around the room here. Does a 12 hit? No, it does not. All right. Next up would be Dwarfy. Again, a 12. I rolled the exact same roll. Nine. Uh, Vivian. Nine. Okay, good. This is no. against what? AC. AC. Okay. Armor class. Flat-footed AC. Against Zenobia. 20. That hits. All right. Come back to you. And Roderick. 12. That misses. All right. So Zenobia is the only one to be hit with the brand. It better be with a Z. <laughs> Zenobia takes 10 points of fire damage. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. As the brand goes basically through her arm oh. and she now has the first portion of a prisoner number branded onto her arm oh, oh man boy I'm gonna have a picture done of this and sell it to the <laughs> <laughs> oh let's see if we can get the brands <laughs> we're just gonna come back with all these random I mean, objects I don't know what to do <laughs> And Are we rolling for initiative? No, because you notice that as all the brands have come through and tried to hit each of you, they're now back in their original place, and they're back to being cold again. Oh, that's creepy. Is the thing still turned over? Can I make a suggestion? Hmm. Could you guys detect magic before we go in the room next time? She did. She detected magic. So it's not, not magic. This this is no, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? Did, did not. <laughs> I, I detect magic now. <laughs> and you regretted not regret it, yeah, not detecting I magic on the other room. You can't blame us for being dissuaded because haunts can't be detected by magic in every single room yeah. we've been in so far. Oh, it's a haunt. It can't uh, be seen by detect magic. Yep. Did this but one, cost would nothing. this one have been detected? It, it would not have been. Okay. So Wow. Okay. So, oh, Zenobia. Let me take a look it's at like, that. Ouchies. Yeah, Roderick, like, his his long hair flowing as he uh, ducks to avoid the brand flying at him. And he looks like, are we all right? No, I'm not all right. I've got a hole in my arm, and i got a brand on me. Yeah, she has a huge searing wound. Ugh. Vivian is going to cast Cure Light Wounds on Miss Zenobia. Thank you. Ooh, for nine points of healing. Excellent. Almost. Ooh, almost, almost healed it all back up. Yeah. As you cast that healing spell on her, you notice that the wound basically almost completely closes up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mostly just, like, bruising and stuff around it still with just that one point. Mm-hmm. But... The scar is still there. Mm. So she still has that scar. So Vivian's holding her arm, Zenobia's arm, and she's kind of turning it back and forth. And she just says, oh, that's interesting. Normally, Cure Light Wounds doesn't scar. And now she does a heal check. Mm, No, she doesn't. But Uh, Roderick looks at it and he's like, this is exactly the same effect as my spell. Your branding spell? Yes, it is permanent as well. Oh, well, that's not very nice. Won't be the last scar I have. And she shows Vivian, say, I've got that one. <laughs> Starts counting off her scars. Starts telling the stories of all of her lifts scars. A, lifts my shirt. See that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad this doesn't... Movie? It was, it's Lethal Weapon. I think two. Where, uh, where's the, see that one? It feels just like gravel. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Or you can just pop his shoulder in and out. Yeah. It will. Uh, yeah. So is it a knowledge religion to see if this is going to happen again? Yes. Natural 18, 27. All right. Uh, so you know that this, of course, was a haunt. It is still an active haunt. However, it is not going to reset for some time. Mm. I can fix it so it doesn't reset at all. Pour some holy water on it? No, oh, we're going to carry it out of, out of here. Oh, well, it might not reset it. It might just attack. Does, well, my, does my 27 tell us any way to end it? You would assume the only way to end it would be to destroy all five of the, the main spirits. Oh, Okay. Well, we got two of them. So we'll Did leave this we? here. What, what is it? What is the... It's like a brazier. Oh, the letter? Yeah, what's, the letter. what's the brand? Yeah. Just for fun, you have Z43. Oh, so like the whole brand is, is letters? Yeah. Oh, crazy. How did they know your age? <laughs> I thought you said it was just first letter. They're different combinations. Got Each it. Each one has different combinations. Got it. Fun. Got it. A uh, fun and a horrifying way. So Roderick says, we do not face a threat from these for some time, but we cannot eliminate them until we get rid of the evil spirits in this prison. Let's not come back in this room until everything's eliminated then, because I want to take these and sell them. 
Good thinking. And so I guess it's just on to the next room down the same hallway. All right. Moving down the hallway on that western side of the building, going north. And oh, look, you found a door. <laughs> we <laughs> saw it from the previous door. So uh, do you want to open this time, Roderick? Let's check it out first and make sure it's safe. I've rolled a 10 four times in a row. Wait, what are we rolling? Perception. 17 on the door. 12. Detect, 12. Some, detect some magic, if you don't mind. No magic. So, Dwarfy got 16. 17. Perception. Yeah, their skull didn't see anything. All right. So you guys don't really notice anything special about this door. This one is locked, but you can tell it's kind of old and rusted, so just a little bit of shove will be able to push it open. So whoever wants to open it, open it just give me a strength check. Thorskill, I'm imagining that's you. Oh, I thought you were salty about not being able to use your knock spell. A little bit. Roderick will aid, by the way. All okay. right. So, yeah. Bust the door. Roderick should have been the roll because he rolled natural 19. <laughs> yeah, and Thorskill rolled a natural 3. <laughs> it's, it appears to be stuck. <laughs> Here, let me try. So I'll aid. Rolling a new check. Natural 19 again. Wow. Ah, so it's I, a 22. It's really a shame we're wasting <laughs> your good rolls on a door. Yeah, right. right. Uh, just opening this door. So the first time, Thurskel just doesn't get the right grip on the door. And no, it's like wet, I think. Isn't able to, to push it open. Roderick says, here, let me try. Steps over, goes to push it, and basically almost falls through the door. <laughs> Actually, you know what? What I would like instead. Okay, so Thurskill's pushing on the door, and then Roderick pulls the door open. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to go with the you, you just saying, well, I loosened it. <laughs> Thurskill is trying really, really hard to pull this door open and can't get it to budge. And Roderick basically says, here, let, let me try to help. He's going to, to go help and puts his hand on the door to, to brace himself and uh -huh. pushes it. And they <laughs> they both fall forward into the room. Oh, hilarious. No doubt triggering a haunt. Trigger the haunt, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thurskill says, well, all the other doors opened out, so I think <laughs> <laughs> So this room is actually uh, relatively dark. There are some small windows, probably about, I'd say each window that's on there is two feet wide and about six inches high. Okay. So really dramatic. So these rectangular walls, or rectangular windows along that northwestern wall, letting just that little bit of light in. But between that and the light spell that is on Zenobia's Quiver, it's enough light for being able to see in here. You see mounds and mounds of, like, moth-eaten fabric just laying around the room. Oh, it's, it's the inventory. Uh, you see uh, workbenches. You see sewing tools. You see needles and rolls of thread. You see boxes of chalk. Other different objects lying around the room, and in one of the piles of fabric to the western side of the room, you see one skeletal arm just <sighs> resting. So this is where they were making license plates. Essentially. If license plates are made out of fabric. Well, I mean, it's prison work. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was, um, that was where they get their their first uniforms. garb. Yeah, their first No, my, my clue is workstations. Yeah, like, this yeah. Is the prisoners. I thought I they know. sewed them into their clothes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Coming I mean, in to do menial labor. It's very possible that the inmates that worked in here made the mm. the attire that you were given. Mm -hmm. In exchange for a reduced sentence, probably. Right. Not a huge industry for prison quilts. The shackles, prisoner quilts. Are there, are there shackles on the walls? There are not. But their skill's a little excited. He's like, ooh, it's a skeleton. I have a hammer for that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's. Uh, there's been a haunt in every single room up to this point, so let's uh, do a, a close investigation. There may be something of note in here. So rolling our perception checks, asking Vivian to detect magic. So do, do I guess we all come in the room then? That is a twenty for Roderick. Yeah, I got a fourteen for Thurskel and a, a thirteen for Dwarvy. Or a fifteen for Stonework. Oh, he's got. Can I use Stonework? He can get stoned. Okay, so can I, does that mean I roll again? Because mm. that was my first one was a perception check. Traditionally, yeah, it's been it's the same a, roll. It's just a plus two. It's on just top a plus two it. on whatever the roll is. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got a plus four perception, so it's worse. No, it's no, it'd be a plus two on to top of that. So it'd be a plus six. So plus four perception so that, well, plus six what did if I say, stone 13? work. Yeah, fifteen if it's stone. Vivian got a ten, and she detects magic. You're wandering through the room a bit. You're looking... We're being very careful because we've been careful. attacked in every single room up to this point. Using perception, you're uh, detecting magic. You don't really see anything of note 
As you get over toward the western side of the room where that skeletal arm was, the skeleton doesn't move, but you see almost this ghostly figure rise up out of that spot as a very blue-tinted woman that looks like this. Oh, my goodness. She's pretty. Yeah, she is pretty. She's very pretty, but everything is blue. Her dress is blue. Her skin is blue. Her hair is blue. Even the tears that she is crying Uh are also blue. And she rises up. She faces you. And she speaks. And as she does, like, even these little wisps of blue, like, condensation come out of her mouth as she speaks. Like it's winter? Kind of. Mm. Who? Who are you? I am Thurskill Shadel, and I have come to exact (laughs) vengeance upon this prison. Are you the new guards? We are here on official business from the government of the town, so kind of. What? I'm sorry. Who, who are you? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. It's been so long since I've seen seen people. Um, my name is Vesoriana. Oh. <gasps> I suspect it, but I didn't want to. I know. I mean, we all suspect it. You, you're the one that's in danger. We are the one that we're here to protect. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you're the one that we're here to protect. I have felt my... My essence weakening lately. It's been ever since that that man came here. A man? What man? Um, I didn't get his name. He was a very polite, uh, very intellectual-looking man. You spoke with him? No, I I never had the opportunity to speak with him. However, he was here. It looked as if he was trying to research something until those other people attacked him. I believe she is speaking of the professor. Uh, Madame Vesoriana, what people? Uh, they were men, men and women in these dark robes, and they uh. they snuck up behind him and 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 killed him. Roderick immediately looks behind himself. He was murdered. He was murdered. He was murdered. Did you see the murder? I I didn't see the murder itself. I I only saw them drag his body. I, I can see out one of these windows here. And I could see towards the front of the prison where they were dragging his body around. And I heard one of them mention something about using the gargoyles to make it look as if it was an accident. It was the professor. Miss Vesoriana, you're speaking of a very close friend of ours. He was a very nice man and a good man. And we are here because of the work he was doing. And we are here to try to set things right. Oh, that... That makes me feel much better that you're here. Well, I've got some bad news. <laughs> what is the bad news? Because <laughs> Molly, you in danger, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, my love. <laughs> <laughs> he does raise a good point. What do you know of the prisoners, specifically the high-profile prisoners that were kept in this prison? Uh, those mongrels after the, the dreaded fire. Uh, things were relatively peaceful for a while. I could feel... My husband's essence here. I feel like he was keeping them at bay. And then after those those robed men came here, they they did foul magics. And I felt these these horrid, horrid men gaining power. And eventually they started writing my husband's name in these runes all around the building. And the more that they did that, the weaker and weaker I could feel my husband to the point where I no longer feel him. He's not here anymore, and I don't know what they did with him. Mm. If he can be found, I assure you we will find him. But the bad news is, I feel that they are coming after you now, in the same way they came after him. What holds you in this room, Madame Vesoriana? I'm not sure. Perhaps it's just the manner in which I died. Is this the room where you died? (laughs) Yes. Is that... I don't mean to be crude, but is that your hand? Yes, it is. I was quite hysterical when my husband didn't come home for dinner, and I, I came to the prison searching for him. He was always working late. He, he uh, had a knack for, for doing that. He was one of the best men that I knew. So he was a good man. He was he was a very, very good man. We will be sure to tell historians that. Thank you. Yes, I was, I was locked in this room when, when the rampage in the, the dungeons below broke out. They were... They were trying to keep me safe. I, I understand that now. The, the the guards were trying to keep me safe, and then the the pandemonium and the fire breaking out. I must have been forgotten. Men and women in Ustalov know of your story. They know of the tragedy that befell you. It is, in fact, quite an experience to be speaking with you now, after hearing the legends for so many years. 
but we know that the splatter man is targeting you. Yes, I'm sorry. I was I was wandering off. We still have business. <laughs> yes. I'm confused out of character. Uh, she burned in here? Yes. She was well, locked in. She, di- she died of smoke inhalation okay. in the room. I was like, that's a lot of fabric to not be burned. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the smoke inhalation that got okay. her in this okay. room. Okay. So, and so that, that explains why she's, she's decayed, but not completely... Scorched. Just bone chips. Yeah. Right. So, Miss Fe- Miss Fesoriana, if you do not mind, I wish to run by you what we understand so far. Okay. And if there's anything else you can tell us that will aid. We have been given the impression from outside that there are five primary prisoners in this dungeon that are working to eliminate you the same way they did your husband in order to free themselves from this prison. We know of five. The, the Piper of Ilmarsh... Father Charlatan, the Maswater Marauder, the Looper, <laughs> the Lopper, which I thought he was the Looper for the longest time. <laughs> yes, that, that happens to everybody. <laughs> it's the double letters. <laughs> and then it seems that the primary threat is the Splatter Man. Do these names sound familiar to you? Yes. These are the, the worst of these prisoners here. That's what the legends imply. I have been fighting strongly against the Splatter Man. I... Vivian shivers at that. Uh, as you say, I've I've been I've been getting weaker because of whatever he has been able to do, which means he's gained strength from the passing again of my husband. I have noticed that the Piper and Father Charlatan have weakened immensely. But yes. they're not gone. They're not gone completely, mm. but they're weak enough that I've been able to keep them from coming back. Okay. Excellent. Yes, we encountered them on the second story, and we defeated them both. Madame Vissoriana, are there any other allies any other in this spirits? prison? Any other good spirits? If you find them, I have not been able to find them myself. Uh, okay. Like I said, I am unable to leave this room. However, I've been able to r- reach out and, and feel the energies and be able to contain them that way. I did feel my husband for quite a while, but... Um, since whatever they did to him, he is gone. And right now I feel like myself and you five are the only ones left that are good in this building. Well, that answers my question. We don't have to fear... Hurting anyone else? Hurting, vanquishing an ally. As this conversation is going on, Vivian is sort of awestruck looking up at Lady Vissoriana, and um, she she's slowly walking up to the, the skeleton... And she just kind of wants to... Sounds very silly, but it's very... I think it's very... She wants to hold the skeleton's hand. Like, she wants to feel a tangible connection to what she's seeing. Mm. And it's a very gentle gesture as she's going through that. Mm. And then the skeleton attacks her. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. That is quite interesting. I have not had a physical connection to my body in over 50 years. And yet, for some reason, I feel connected to you. I, I feel the same. I've, um, the splatter band's been targeting me as well, and I'm very glad to see you. I'm very glad to see you, and that you're still here. I am fighting as hard as I can. Do I'm... you know anything about brands? <laughs> I wonder, is there... We have found your your husband's office. Yes. And it, it feels safe in there. If we were able to move your remains to there, would that... Would you like that? With a <laughs> question mark? If... <laughs> is it possible? You can move my remains wherever you'd like. Um, unfortunately, spiritually, I am tied to this room. Okay. And I'm right. unable to leave. However, if you want to remove my physical body from this pile of rotted fabric, <laughs> it, it does nothing for my complexion. We're, we're very good at placing dead bodies into humorous positions. It may be a little bit awkward with her watching. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's us preparing your body. Well, Is this right? I, well, I could, I, we could put you in the, in your... Here's her holding her head on the lap. Yeah, we could put your husband's... Um, your, you in your husband's chair, and you can make it look like you're smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> As if I was waiting for him to come back to his office. Exactly. Also, that's very bad for your health. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. think it matters now. Oh, smoking though, that might be a little in bad taste. Yeah. <laughs> it's in bad taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that part's the bad taste. She's smoking, not the, not the She quit the smoking like fifty years ago. <laughs> right. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Philip's on fire. Uh, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Alright. Fire um, jokes. So there were the other questions. <laughs> okay, so I have one more question. Yes. Do you got any loot? 
Um, do you got anything good to help us fight these monsters? That's very rude. We're, it's we're not having, rude. We're trying we're to help. We're having a very important I don't think moment that here. You understand that we are in danger being. right now. I, look, um, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have anything physically to give you. However, I can tell you this: if you are able to find the five items that are connected to each of these five prisoners, those items will be able to harm those prisoners. Oh, oh we've got one already. Yep. Oh, oh, do we? How would? How, how do we? How do we hurt it? We it's... we already faced Father Charlotte, and we've got the the holy symbols. You have those. So um, Roderick reaches into his pack, and like the all the holy symbols that were tied to Father Charlton. Is this what you speak of? Yes, items like that that are connected to the the prisoners. Oh. Each one will only affect that prisoner. Makes sense. So those would only work against Father Charlton. So mechanically speaking, Roderick's battle with Father Charlton was easier because he had the holy symbols on him. Yes. Oh, so That's cool. so cool. I didn't know that. So that would cool. have been harder if Excellent. Roderick didn't yes. pick up the holy symbols. Wow. I just did that on a lark. Wow. Did you not leave one somewhere? No, he has them all. He, we he only faced he, the Piper and Father Charles. Because thought- Roderick thought it was disrespectful to have all the holy symbols just sprawled out on the mm-hmm. floor with a cr- crumbled mm-hmm. skeleton. So he's like, I'm going to take these with wow. me. That's okay. so cool. Do you know what the other symbols are? Yes. Or items? <laughs> well, obviously the uh, Piper of Ilmarsh. You're looking for his, his flute. For the Lopper. You would be looking for a. Uh, it'd be a very blood-stained hand axe. Ew. They let him keep a hand axe in the prison. Right, that's what I was thinking. Well, it, it, I don't think it would be on him. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be wherever the um, evidence room. Evidence room. room. Confiscated items, which I'm sure they put close to the prisoners, so that it would be easier <laughs> for them to get them back. So, based on that logic, the marauder would be his hammer. Yes, uh, the mosswater marauder. Uh, you would be looking for a hammer. We have three people in the party who are very fond of hammers. <laughs> and four. The splatter man. He'd be looking for his spell book. Oh, that's triggering. That's ringing a bell in my head. But we haven't come across any unusual spell books in this adventure, have we? No. Okay. Nothing yet. Sorry. Uh, that, that's probably a different AP. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would assume that these items would be located on this floor, as this is where the um, prisoner inventory mm. was kept. Mm. Um, I'm not sure where I. I was only given a brief overview of the prison. I wasn't given a complete tour of where everything is, so I'm not sure what to, where exactly to lead you. However, I do know it would be on this floor. Interesting. One more thing. As it appears that you are able to defeat these prisoners and weaken them, once they're weakened, I can keep them from returning. Ah, uh, uh, excellent. Once all five are defeated, I will need one item that belonged to my husband. Something that asserts his power that I can use to banish them for good. Oh, do you think that would be in the safe? I think that would be in the safe. I was just thinking that. It could potentially be in the safe, or, or, it, or it could be with him down in the dungeon. I, I'm not that. I'm not sure. His baton. Maybe his key is in the dungeon, and we have to go back up to the safe with the key. It's very complicated. I, I would think he, he's in the picture, right? And he's got a baton thing. The, mm. His blackjack. His big stick. He would have that. Um, you mean like a truncheon? Yeah, truncheon. Okay. But yes, one item that one item that would assert his power that I can use to to banish these five prisoners for good. And once that task is completed, then I will be set free, <laughs> and I can finally see my husband again. I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to ask if there was anything we could do to set you free once we are done clearing this prison of evil. I feel like the only reason I am still here is to make sure that these undead are put to rest. Once they are put to rest, then I will go of my own accord. Keep fighting. You are doing you're doing excellent work, and we are here and we are going to stop this evil. Yes, we are very appreciative of your help, and we are fully dedicated to finishing this mission and eliminating the evil. Do you know anything else about this floor? You said the items that belong to these prisoners are probably here? Uh, yes, they they would probably be here. Um, this is where first floor is where inmates were taken and processed um, to be determined which level of cells, um, whether they be in the upper floor and the lower levels of security or down into the dungeons where the, the worst of the worst were kept. Any of the administrative stuff would be here on this floor. And you don't know anything else about this floor? No. A- a- as I mentioned before, I was only given a brief summary of what is what is here in this prison. My husband tried uh, to keep me informed of what was going on here, but he wanted to keep me away from anything unsavory. And 
Understandable. Did he give you the code to the safe? <laughs> he didn't give me a code. Um, he always had a key. So the key is probably with his, uh, body. his body. So it was not a combination lock. It was a key lock. It was a key lock. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was... I thought it was a common name. I was like, yeah. what's your anniversary? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, <laughs> so you said... What was your pet's name? <laughs> so you said the worst prisoners were held in the basement. That leads to two questions. Mm-hmm. Do you know where the three remaining prisoners are? Um, I would assume that they are also in the basement. All three, you would imagine? Yes. And that's where your husband died? Correct. Um, he was down in the dungeons, from what I understand, um, when the riots broke out and the fire. So he never made it out of the basement. Mm-hmm. So, since Father Charlotte and Stungs were with him, should we go back up to try and find the pipers? She said it would be more likely to be on this floor earlier. Okay. The, yeah. di- the difference with that perhaps would be um, Father Charlatan was not a murderer, so he was kept on the third floor. Um, so he had a few more of his own belongings that he got to keep mm-hmm. with him. Um, the piper, however, was kept down in the dungeons because he was, in fact, a murderer. The rest of them were murderers, correct? Correct. Okay. Father Charlatan is the only one that did not kill. Directly. He's still a jerk. Yes. And is there anything else of note that you may be able to tell us about the basement, other than the three prisoners and, unfortunately, the remains of your husband? May he rest in peace. Like, did you ever take a tour? I, Do you know the layout? I, I wish I could give you more information about the, the dungeons. Um, that is one of the locations my husband did not take me, so... Understandably. He, he wanted to keep me away from, from those those inmates. Very well. Well, just any information may be helpful, um, but we do appreciate you have given us much to work with. We will continue to investigate this floor and see if we can find any items that will help us as we battle the evil spirits in the basement. Thank you for, for, for helping me in this battle. If you have any further questions or if you find any other items you need help identifying, um, seeing if they are the correct ones, I will be here in this room. Do you need a book or anything? <laughs> no, no, I've, um... <laughs> He's got that Torag book. Um, my problem is I, I don't know that I could flip the pages. Gotcha. Uh, we'll come back Roger every goes hour. Into, Roger goes into prosthetizing mode. Have you ever heard the good news about Torag? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you leave the pages open to where I could just read it... Just tear open the whole book. <laughs> just lay them all down. I hope there's no wind in here. <laughs> I, Vivian's almost, she truly is almost speechless at, at this whole thing. And uh, she just says, thank you, Vissoriana. We're, we're so grateful to meet you. And then Vivian wants to, does want to move her physical remains into the warden's office. Okay. Yeah, if, if which, is on, which is on the same level. floor. Yeah, just, yeah, we can just backtrack where we've yeah. already been. We know a safe yeah. route. So T- Tuck him into a nice little drawer. Yeah, if, if <laughs> Vivian is doing that, Roderick's going to follow suit because he has a really high knowledge religion check as well. So he's aiding her in the proper religious mm-hmm. uh, ceremonies for And you got Dwarfy. Entering. Dwarfy is oh, yeah, a war priest. And Dwarfy as well. we got some really religious people in this group. So. She's, uh, she's singing a quiet hymn of Shaylin as she's doing this. Now, to be clear, we only do this if Vissarion is cool with it. If it's weird, <laughs> then we're just going to wait until she goes away. She's cool with it. So uh, Viv- Vivian sings a quiet hymn of Shaylin while she's doing this. Something about beauty in the darkness, yeah, leading to light sort of thing. Rainbow after the storm, kind of. If it's an easy one, if it's a popular one, Roderick probably knows it too. Yeah, you know the chorus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he knows the chorus and can kind of like... Well, we learned a lot of these songs during the funeral. To remember, mm-hmm. we shared our uh, funeral music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So our what does Zenobia think of all of this religious stuff that's going on? Well, Zenobia is not a-religious. I mean, she's not without religion. Right, she just believes in Desna. And uh, she certainly has become more Ustalavian sophisticated, whatever level that is. Just by uh, osmosis. By mm-hmm. osmosis. So it's just... And she res- she just respects this woman's uh, power mm-hmm. that she's been... She doesn't necessarily understand uh, as much goodness as she sees in her, so she's taking it all in, and as these as the priests are preparing her body, she starts her uh, her religion, which is preparation. So she's pulling out her short sword, and she's singing her local dirge, but she's also practicing. Mm-hmm. I like it. With, how does Zenobia feel about having an undead as an ally? Ooh, good question. It's the evil 
that I'm out to release. So this is this is where recognition of religion is important. That Zenobia recognizes good and evil and knows the difference. And her mission's to eradicate evil, evil undead. Okay, so she knows. Okay, so which is I, why she's trying to check out: Are there any allies? She doesn't like to kill allies. I think that that that's good because. The goal here is to set Vesoriana free. Exactly. Yeah, and I think this is an interesting character shift for Zenobia because for several episodes she was like, just kill all in dead, period, without remorse. And now that she's met one, that's like, well, maybe we should work with this one instead of killing it. Mm. Well, in theory, she's she's known known about about, uh, Vesoriana and she knows that she's the... We know, we all know that Vesoriana is the cork in this bottle. If she's gone, there's nothing stopping this... But Zenobia has been very stubborn about undead up till this point. That's true. She's been very like, so kill it's, them all, so it's let just God a, sort them out. Yeah. So, this is the consideration, but you've been teaching me about more subtle aspects. Vivian has. Yeah. 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 So that makes sense. It's part of the Vivian influence. So, yeah, it's it's this is part of her character growth is being uh And ghosts ally. didn't ghosts didn't kill my family. It mm-hmm. was vampires. Mhm. Da, da, da. Da, da, was that a spoiler? <laughs> I think it was. We haven't. We didn't know it was vampires. <laughs> <laughs> we just knew it was undead. As as a bar bar chat, we can get into that. Later, mm-hmm. But, uh, but sh- going through, the, I mean, we 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 have to have as characters talked about this going on because it's certainly clear what my mission is. Roderick wouldn't have left it alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, that was going to say his. Yeah. Roderick's interest in this is very academic. He's he's like got thoughts running through his head, and he's like, "So, so what do you think makes a good ghost? Like, we made a lot of evil." Ones. <laughs> Vivian is just at, during this whole preparation is just crying tears of just just emotion. She's she's very moved by the whole thing. So she's not helping. And I think this is the other thing for Zenobia, going through what she had gone through and the sort of loss that she'd gone through. She had a lot of respect for this woman defending her family and mm-hmm. dying dying in the act. So perhaps this is why was she undead? She was left as undead to protect. She's not undead to kill other people and make them undead. She's to, she's a protection. I like that. That right. makes a lot okay. of sense. So this is how she can justify it, is that this haunt is not evil. Mm-hmm. It's not setting out to make other living things mm-hmm. like her. See, what I would have thought is that it would have been the lesser of two evils. Vasorian is still evil because she's undead, but she's also, like you said, the cork in the bottle. If this domino falls, all of the other ones yeah. fall and they yeah. get out. It's not so much about respecting and knowing that Vasorian is good it's that the, yeah. The, yeah she's the lesser of five years. yeah but the, yeah so so but to me I, 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 is more complicated than she appears yes cool no, thrush girl's not <laughs> <laughs> very cool. cool learned learned a little about zenobia and ourselves and you yes. can see how you can edit that in so it makes yeah so, it's so we've we've defeated two of the evil spirits and found one of the good ones and the only good one have oh, but we only have one of their things yeah, yeah, only we one item. The other pipe. We didn't get that pipe. Well, she said they're probably on this floor, so I guess it's continue searching floor one. Yeah, so we got uh, Vasoriana's remains, um, all nice and t- wrapped up, cute mm-hmm. little package with a bow on it, <laughs> and <laughs> in the warden's office. Um, when we when we entered this room, Roderick rolled a twenty perception. Did he see anything in this room as he came in? As you, you came saw in the Vesoriana. room, you saw Vesoriana, but as you uh, continue looking around the room, I'll roll over that uh, 20 perception. On the northeastern wall, you see what appears to be a secret door. What? Hey, Dwarfy, look at what you missed. Uh, I, I, I didn't miss it. There was just a skeleton I was paying better attention to. Drink? <laughs> she is very pretty. No more drinking. Did did. Are you sure you don't worship Caden and Kaylian? I'm, I'm sure. Um, so, but she's like single and stuff now, right? Dorothy, <laughs> <laughs> uh. that is highly inappropriate. Help me open this door. Um. Okay. Um. Could Could you leave her my number? No, Dorothy. We're We're gonna have a conversation later. What What about my? Uh, no. No. Not even my. No. Ethereum L address. No. No. Well, what's What's your What's your What's your handle? What's your ethereal handle? Dwarfy is the best at uh, ethereummill.com. No. Okay. We found a secret door. You do find a secret door. So who goes through it first? Dwarfy. Can Roderick open it with open close? Yes. Yay! Yay! So, You're useful. So please stand back and Roderick <laughs> cast the cantrip, open close, to open the secret door. All right. This secret door, instead of opening in or out, it kind of just slides into the wall. Nice. Pocket, and pocket door. door. Yeah. Well, pocket door. As you look through the door, you see basically another room that has like these rusted tubs in it and more laundry. Mm. Uh, it's basically a like 
It's a laundry room. A laundry room. Why is it secret? Why does it have a secret door? It's like, it's it's got poisonous do, chemicals, maybe? The lie? They do secret laundry. Yeah. It's where they lock the Maybe a knowledge local or knowledge history will tell us. That's where you wash your unmentionables. Their drawers. It's where they wash their drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Underwear? Under there. 23. Knowledge local? Nole- 23 knowledge local. That's a natural 19 Why? and a... Is there a secret room? <laughs> A secret door between the laundry room and the workshop. Yes. Do I know the answer to that? It doesn't (laughs) say. It's just a random secret door for no reason. Uh, My my guess is because at this time, at this day and age, you use a lot of toxic chemicals to do washing. Um, like no, like lye soap and stuff, like Um, something that you could use to harm someone. Ah, so they would have a private. uh, Like they don't want the prisoners to get a hold of you know. Ooh, that's a good. That's 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 my thought. It's kind of like you know you can't have mouthwash because you'll distill it for alcohol. You're not allowed to do the laundry because you'll try to throw someone into the vat. (laughs) That's way better than okay. I was going to put nothing. That's my theory. Okay, sounds good. Let us know. (laughs) Anyway, detect magic perception in the new room. So as you enter the room, uh, you don't really notice anything of interest. You see more piles of like moldy clothing. You see these rusted tubs. You see the some of the chemicals lying around. Mm-hmm. So uh, what were those uh, perception checks in the room? 18 and 11 for Thursday and Dwarvey. 19. 11, 19. 24. 21. 24. So Zenobia is the one to notice. One of the, the mounds of clothing basically starts... No. It looks like it's kind of nope. moving as if nope. there is like a, an animal nope. underneath it kind of moving it around. Uh, No. It's an animated pile of clothes. And and, and as it it starts moving a little bit, you start seeing that an arm of it comes out and another arm of it comes out the other arm. And then the leather straps of it start moving its way out and making its way up. And it's it's a straight jacket. Oh! Wow, I had no idea what you were describing. (laughs) The laundry is moving. It's not a creature in it. The laundry itself is moving. It was just, it looked like an animal was on that kind of moving it and oh, that's horrifying. It move around. And that straight jacket goes to lunge at Zenobia. Oh. And we'll roll for initiative next week. Oh. That's terrible. Right back Come into on. it. So everything is alive in this prison.